Hello and welcome to Just a Book. Today I'm looking at The Rabbits, written by John Marston and illustrated by Sean Tan. This is a text that has been analysed, critiqued and criticised endlessly, so you can find a lot of information out there already. I'm just going to give some of my perspectives. I've referenced a few essays and also another video where this, um, at the time, a young guy uh, also analysed it, which I found incredibly helpful. So I'm going to be you sort of taking a lot from him and just adding my own two cents. A few facts here about this book is that, interestingly, John Marson and Sean Tan didn't actually talk much in the creation of this book. John Marson had sent through the narrative and over, quote, a couple exchanges of faxes were the illustrations made. So they didn't actually have much of a conversation. This has led to what has been seen as an interesting friction between dialogue and image. Uh, and also, uh, but there's a disconnect that people can sometimes feel between both. One main difference, which I which I was reading on the essay linked, is that it is thought, well, it is seen that John Marsden's text is very represents this uh, experience of settlement taking over the indigenous land represents it in the much more confrontational, aggressive way, where the images are much more estranged and curious. So there's two different feeling tones which come through, which kind of um, can conflict with each other, but in some ways complement each other as well. So that's quite interesting there. Another problem which is seen by this book is that both authors are not Aboriginal, yet are giving and representing an Aboriginal perspective. So there's a lot of conversation about that that's been happening. I'm going to get into it. I'm just going to go through this book and see what I can take out and what I like about this. It may be helpful to you or to your students if you are teaching students about this. All right. So with the front cover, I'm not going to go into it this time as much because this cover comes from comes later into the book. So I'll get into that. All right. The rabbits. All right, so uh, just starting with the text here, well, let's just take this in. You've got this beautiful picture here, absolutely wonderful. And this border is, oh, I love it. I don't know why this white border goes throughout the whole book, but it's uh, beautiful. It kind of hints on James Gleason, who's an Australian artist. There's some surreal stuff happening here, in particular, these sort of, um, how do you describe that? These parts to this almost organic landscape, very, very organic. Uh, it's kind of like a James Gleason reference. So that kind of comes throughout many of Sean Tan's illustrations in other books, not just this one. The text here is, is brilliant. It says, the rabbits came many grandparents ago. Now, interesting here, we're getting the perspective of the marsupials, um, which are the represented, the Aboriginals are represented as the marsupials here. And this is them talking and they're using time in a different way. So the Western world would be categorizing and segmenting time in terms of seconds, minutes, hours, weeks, centuries, etc. But because we're getting it from a different perspective, a different culture, we're seeing the measurement of time is, is, is quoted as many grandparents ago, which is brilliant. Very simple, very smart, but exactly to the point and sets up a different almost uh, time atmosphere which we're going to be taking through this book. So when we do zoom in, in terms of the visual language going on here, these are actually uh, uh, fossils uh, which you can understandably see in the landscape. So they're all buried, there's not many, there's going to be a contrast to this later on. So it's a lovely sort of picture of how life and death exist within, within this landscape. We can also see reptiles down here, and the reptiles are, are, are looking and therefore leading the eye into the horizon, where we see the strange, um, the strange experience happening, which is probably never seen before. These puffs of smoke coming out of the out of the horizon. It's a chimney. Why I think it's uh, reptilian is because it is again referencing the ancientness of the land. The ancientness of the land. So we have this time reference that goes right back into the land is inhabited by ancient creatures. And um, yeah, they're seeing this sort of new encounter. There's also been some conversation about birds and birds flying when they feel scared or unsafe. 
So the fact that birds are flying in this image, flying away from this scene down here, means they are interrupted. Their nature is interrupted and therefore they are escaping. So that's been one sort of observation made. You can see here on this page, I'm going to go back a page, the colours are incredibly beautiful, pure pastel. They're, they're lovely. They're not artificial. Uh, and that's important. That's important. As the takeover from the settlers happens more in the book, this colour palette changes. Lovely image here. Absolutely incredible. You have a, a line, or this is the line of the page, but it's a line of symmetry, actually. You can see that we have on this side the marsupials, the wombats, I think they are, and they are exactly the same amount in the same positions as the settlers, as the rabbits. So you have kind of like leaders over here. You got two over there, two over there. The rock is the organic part, and you have a, a lookout over here. And then you have uh, the chariot here which replaces the rock on the other side and they're also almost kind of looking out there's the smoke from the chimney which they saw on the horizon and you have yeah it's, it's a beautiful line of symmetry the tire marks from this chariot from this cargo is tearing through the center and into the uh, right side of the book and therefore it is sort of suggested that the darker landscape, the darker tones represent almost already a slight decaying or a slight overuse uh, or unusual use of the land. We're on the side of nature of what has been normal or typical uh, organic is much more lighter um, and fresh. You have the curiosity of this new vehicle coming through with the birds they're sort of looking at the tracks they're kind of uh, looking and, and examining it this other marsupial creature uh is or lizard is sniffing the tire tracks so the world around the marsupials is also encountering this the beginning of a of a takeover of an invasion well they don't know that just yet all right Again, just take this page in. It's very colourful. Got this beautiful green in the middle. All right. But our old people warned us: be careful. They won't understand the right ways. They only know their own country. More rabbits came. So interestingly, we have uh, old people warned us as if this has happened before. That that's just very interesting in itself. I, I don't know. It's um, it's like ancient knowledge there. Uh, they won't understand the right ways, uh, and they will only understand their own country. We have here a collabor a seemingly uh, a, a collaboration between cultures where they are teaching each other. Well, teaching one another. Yes different technologies and different understandings of the world. You can see in almost all of the rabbit's hands that there is something scientific, something to measure, something to quantify. The, the testing of a lizard is down here in this sort of green goo, and you have someone who's holding up the world as something to be studied, and investigated, and in the process of destroyed and torn up. Uh, and yeah, so documenting, quantifying, I love this little feature here. The pen is the feather of a peacock. Uh, so even this sort of beautiful bird is being used, has been used for a utilitarian uh, objective, just to document. Uh, yes, and the rabbits are starting to take over the world. All these kind of like suggestive, not suggestive, sorry, 31N or, you know, 31 meters or something like that. All these numbers and arrows will start to appear around the rabbits as they take over the land. You have here a very powerful visual cue that Sean Tan likes to do. It's a rip in the page. Most of the time, it's seen as a, a, a time, there's some, it's disrupting time. In this case, it's potentially going to the future. So we're getting a glimpse into the future. And you can see, I don't know if this is intentional but the gear over here versus the gear over here it's like well that's all that's left uh, and you have this again bright colored terrain being turned into this dark dark soil 
uh, used and left behind. So there's a flash forward moment which is um, torn through the page. This isn't what the tear is, but it's a lovely reminder when I'm teaching this book, the terra nullius, which is a concept where uh, you come to a land and you think it is uninhabited or it doesn't belong to anyone. It's not in use. And the Western world sees that because there's no buildings, there's no flags, there's no conceivable households or societal structure. So part of the settlement agenda or the settlement uh, criteria is to say, well, this land is terra nullius. It belongs to no one. And there's the terra, T-E-R-R-A, terra. But there's the terra here. It's a nice little reminder. So the settlement, the settlers here, um, the English, I guess, were... Uh, assuming that this is belongs to no one, it's 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 no one's land, no man's land. There's nothing on it. It's desolate. Therefore, we can take over. Then we have the grand front image coming uh, to us. The image from the front page, incredibly done. The detail in this is really really good. If I just zoom in, you can see how much Sean Tan just gives time to this. This is an incredible work of art. Absolutely amazing. All these windows, these gears, oh, the amount of sails, the red flags, the amount of, I think the amount of sails here represents the amount of boats that came out. Although if you look down here, the boat itself is carrying boats in it. It's kind of like that Trojan horse motif, not motif, symbol of the one thing coming in looking, you know, quite friendly. Not in this case, but quite friendly. It's a gift, but then opening up and out comes even more invaders and the real kind of, quote, virus. So they came by water. Very... That's the only text in this page um, that came by water. Very small, but and we can just be like, oh, okay, they came by water. It can be very simplified. But when you actually see what's happening here, it's such a modest statement to what's actually happening. Uh, this picture, uh, um, when researching this, um, comes from, open this, ta-da. I think this picture here which is the landing of Lieutenant James Cook at Botany Bay. So it's the first landing, the first fleet when they first came, the British, when they first came over and they settled at Botany Bay to put all the, um, uh, con a lot of the convicts, it was like a new prison. I don't know if people know that. Let's get rid of this picture down here. That doesn't matter. But yeah, there's there's this sort of correlation here. You have the, um, the huge sort of triangular flag on the left. We can talk about the flag in a moment in the actual picture. And they're coming from water and then coming on land. So there's a connection here with that. The flag itself is very important. Uh, most of the rabbits look the same, as they always do. However, there is one here that looks definitely the lieutenant, the one in charge. And he has this particular uh, arrangement of arrows on his hat or the, sorry, the flag, what am I saying? Flag, and it's pointing in every direction. So the idea is that we're gonna be conquering all of space in every way we can. It's not just sort of forward, it's it's everywhere. We want to own, we will own every single uh, part of the world. That's their that's their mission. And he carry, they carry that proudly, the, the bearer over here. You can see on their clothes, there is there is language written. Language written. The written language is a very important form of, of what the Westerners or the um, invaders see as power at this time in our history, because uh, the Aboriginal and Indigenous people would never use written text as we do alphabetically. There'd be symbols, but not written text. And a way the 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 suggestion of, of writing is that we are labeling everything we see. It's a scientific act. So things get locked down. Uh, and that, and, and so this is here. And you can also see those arrows I was talking about a few, a page before, where everything is measured, thought of, and constructed scientifically and mechanically. You have a few, uh, oh, let's say wombats, it's nimbats. You have a few marsupials in any case, uh, observing from the right and they are dwarfed by uh there's a little target there they are dwarfed by the event that is happening before them the perspective here that sean tan has put us has been looking from the bottom right up at this ship and it's a spectacular view very very spectacular uh you can also sort of what suggestively see this sort of human uh 
the structure in the clouds uh, I, I wanted to I wanted to sort of say that the clouds are pushing away or resisting the event but I can't I can't say that it doesn't look like it but there is something organic about this which uh, Tan does do also these kind of like tentacle stuff over here he can make smoke look like tentacles yeah they didn't live in the trees like we did they made their own houses we couldn't understand the way they talked so they didn't live in the trees like we did the mass peoples at this point are pushed right at the top of the screen they're crowded uh they're dwarfed sorry they're yeah they're dwarfed they're not considered when this incredible takeover is happening we can see the idyllic uh painting a painting here of what the settlers or invaders want to do what they want to construct this is their view this is their vision of the perfect utopia and the sun in the center is glorifying this view it's it's sanctifying it and they want to um show the world what they can do in all this space this unused space that's why i think it's in a painting format they're going to take this and send it across i think there's some mail here uh and things to sort of send back to the world and say how great and wonderful this operation or how wonderful it is that we've come and we have saved the the um indigenous people you know we've given them knowledge however in the background we see it's very much the opposite what we have in the construction are these dull white buildings which are just pieced together you know parts of the puzzle just being stock standard the fact that they're on furniture legs means for me that they're they're not even uh considering the land around them they're just building what they know and plonking it onto the land of course what we've learned in recent decades is to adapt your architecture to the land around you but this is not even thought of at all it's not considered so uh the construction is is going ahead there's the flag pointing to all signs uh, and they are um, also erecting electricity and you have here some of the effects of uh colonization where you know where new materials and technologies are killing off the animals a squashed lizard and again you have a numbered suit everything is thought of as uh in terms of maths and science and you have the sign of an introduced species the rat is coming and devouring what is native to australia in this case the beginnings of pollution it's a very powerful scene so what is idolized versus what is real and they're presenting this they're presenting this and announcing it they brought new food and they brought other animals we liked some of the food and we liked some of the animals but some of the food made us sick and some of the animals scared us so this is where one of the, the this is where the point i was making with color clocks in you see a very artificial fluoro palette coming through with this unnatural pink this highly toxic really green the shape of the animals are sort of fluoro blue compared to if i go back this beautiful um organic landscape and just on this note sorry this is fred williams who is an australian painter and you can see that fred williams has similar painting styles if i just cross reference that there you can see that coming through so very nice so we have a very sterilized uh view of the world now it's been even the color has changed and the animals are of course domestic domesticated they are made to serve one uh purpose alone that is to feed and make us more comfortable the sheep are eating robotically they're eating at the same time because that's what they've been um, bred to do cows as well they're all hooked up to milk tanks and just being used for their milk we have a production line at the back we have wool beef cows it could be gold and we have what looks like water but i actually think is alcohol and i'll come back to that in another moment um all happening there 
The cows themselves are all also cut up as if ready to be eaten. Their portions are made and it's just a production line it's an absolute production line everything has clocks on them or time and it's just let's get this done efficiency 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 and i think yeah it even extends to the back efficiency 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 some of the food made us sick which which implies that the food that, that could have been a shared experience you know like it wasn't just uh, there are Aboriginal people and we're going to get rid of them and kill them. I think there was definitely, um, what's it called, gentrification happening. And the fact that made us sick, I've taken this off the other video, made us sick, I really like this, it's upside down. I think that's the nauseating effect that the food gave them. It made them actually feel unwell and they had, you know, probably vertigo or not they had, but vertigo and, and nausea was a symptom of the food, the unnatural food that they uh, gave. You can see how the um nimbats i'm gonna change i'm gonna after this video i'm gonna research this and is it nimbats or wombats marsupials is the safest word they are sort of shredded onto a little island and they are scared from animals you can see all these footprints and and uncertainty around them the land is torn up again it's a tear in the fabric of time of space uh very very nice at how sean ten does that I mean, they brought new food. Oh, no, that's okay. We like some of the food. Yeah. Very whew, stark image, this. The rabbits spread across the country. No mountain could stop them. No desert, no river. So here we have uh, the full implications of what the settlers, invaders can do, which is to destroy the land and cut straight through it without any regard for it. All the pipes, all the roads are just cut through the mountains. They're not built around them. They're not built on the floor. Nothing can stop the uh, greed or the energy which the invaders are possess. And it's just coming right through all of that, cutting through. Surprisingly, there's still stars in the night. And they are measuring up the land, literally measuring it up. These are the lines of latitude and longitude you can see on maps. How tall is it? And they'll be writing that up onto um, maps and sending it back into the enlightened world. Uh, you can see a little um, last people there looking at what's happening as they take over the world. Lovely little um, <laughs> feature here is that even the teacups are shaped in the shapes of rabbits, which suggests their own vanity how much they are obsessed with themselves. The flag here, again, points to all directions. Invasion is gonna take through all of space. And even their battle plan is shaped like their flag, which suggests that they are going to take over the space of everything around them. Uh, and doing it over, of course, tea. And tea was one of the biggest reasons that the British Empire took over India because tea was a, seen as an absolute delicacy and a luxury. So that's just something to note there. Again, it's this uh, nuclear, almost toxic fluoro uh, color scheme placed here. Yeah. Okay, the battle scene. Still more of them came. Sometimes we had fights, but there were too many rabbits. So we have cut scenes or tear scenes. And you have uh, the marsupials or the indigenous people fighting back, trying to save their land, causing destruction, uh, tearing up pipes. They are uh, throwing weapons, killing the rabbits, trying to protect their land, take what was theirs, what is theirs, cutting the fence, burning things on fire. But of course, the sheer force and the weaponry of the, set of the invaders uh, is just too much and they lose. This is a very powerful picture. We have the repetition, which just you know exaggerates or amplifies or proves the power of 
the invaders. This picture here reminds me of one of my favorite artists, Joseph Turner. Now, I don't know what this image, this little dot here is. I'm going to say it's, it's, I don't know, but I want to say it's a, one of the marsupials because in this picture here, which I found, do I have it? Yes, I have. Uh, Joseph Turner, Joseph Turner's, um, Rain, steam, and speed. Uh, in this picture, you have the train, which is representative of the industrial age, coming through the beautiful mist and majesty of the environment around. And if you zoom in, you can see what Joseph Turner did was a little tiny rabbit running away, which is representative of nature. It's a metaphor for nature being run over by this train coming straight for it and has nowhere to go. So I just am making some links there between that and this sort of image here. We lost the fight. Again, very minimal, very simple, a simplified version of saying things. What more can you say? The invaders have taken everything on the top and have left nothing but signs of their mission which is just to keep taking things over and over. They are still looking to see what they can do. There's a camera at the top and then a huge well, which, or a tear, I should say, in the fabric of what has happened or what will happen, where uh, we have captured natives being uh, sort of taken for, um, what's the word? Extortion. Extortion? It'll come to me. And I have a, another picture here. Do I have another picture? Yes, of this here, which is of Aboriginal people being made into slaves. And that is, there's a link there with that. Um, the sheer amount of fossils underneath the earth is grossly more than what we saw in the first page with the natural life and death cycle. Here we have the burial ground, the aftermath of the indigenous people. These white dots are a uh, photocopy error. They ate our grass, they chopped down our trees and scared away our friends. You have the machines here which look almost piranha-like, just eating up, tearing the land before it. In the background, you have the symbol of the flag entrenched in the land itself, which just again is another uh, push towards the mission of the invaders. The land is burning up. This part here is again meant to be another one of these piranha rabbit machines. We see one, two, three, four. They're just completely destroying everything. These are native uh, rodents here, or marsupials, sorry. Uh, I know that because I'm Australian and the long tail is from an animal I know in Australia, a native. <laughs> uh, yes. So again, just devouring everything as you see it. The blood red atmosphere color scheme just is symbolic of the blood red destruction which is happening before it. You have hints of beautiful kind of magical uh, natural greenery and majest and nature being shredded by nature, by um, machinery. And all this pollution is, is being plugged into the air. And stole our children. So it's a full sentence there. They chopped down our trees and scared away our friends and stole our children. The, it was a very sad scene, this um, appropriation here, trying to, um, I won't go into that, but the, the interesting part here is where they hold each word onto a declaration. So, uh, so here, I think Sean Tan wants you to read every word independently. This is a very profound sentence, it's a very profound scene, and he's trying to slow us down and actually take in what is happening and stole our children. And you have here literally all the native uh, people trying to grab 
their children who are in the air being flown away by these ships or these airships in very frightening absolutely frightening um it's a proclamation they're declaring that this is now done we have finished taking over this land yeah and also there's something about the text being written that propels this idea the fact that it's written and stamped means that it is now civilized where if you go into a cultural land that it doesn't have language and text then it means they're uncivilized rabbits rabbits millions and millions of rabbits everywhere we look there are rabbits now rabbits were actually introduced species into australia which destroyed a lot of australian native land life flora and fauna so it's a uh, nice irony that rabbits were the pests who came in it's beautiful beautifully done so this is the grand utopia which is horribly different from the painting which they envisioned this warm glow of the sun well the sun is being completely blocked out by the pollution by the destruction of the natural landscape around them everything is robotic even the position of the um, smoke coming out of all the chimneys it's like even that is marching everything looks the same uh, and a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff happening here so firstly you've got a lot of the rabbits on wheels which again pushes the idea that they it's all about efficiency they're trying to move around as fast as they can there's no time to think no time to actually see what's going on and you have this person in the background holding a uh, picture which actually says it's very blurry but i know what it says and it says think and it's hard you can't see it here it's too blurry but it says think and it's a protester uh a protester saying actually what are we doing this isn't how we envisioned it we need to stop this and we need to do things differently so you have a protester down here the protester is next to a younger num a nut next to a younger rabbit who is observing this is a yellow flower a yellow flower breaking through the concrete breaking through the order the structure that they've made and this is a little sign of optimism of hope that maybe the younger generations can actually come to a new realization about things and change the future uh, for the better you see a bunch of numbats there are numbats i just discovered you see a bunch of numbats there but they are looking unwell and they are looking well to be frank drunk because alcohol was a humongous problem with the aboriginal people and many um, indigenous cultures which just tears through the society structures and destroys much of their ability to function and progress so you have four or five numbats there uh, not doing well at all because they are intoxicated um, might equals right there's a very strong view here that because these invaders are the strongest that means that they are right and correct so that's a motif that's actually spilled through much of the book which i didn't actually mention the huge statue here sitting on this pillar is uh, again a symbol of how proud they are of their colonial past how proud they are of what they have done and it's holding a globe now of this flag image that we've seen prior to this which means to take over in all directions we are the owners of everything it's a godlike position that they have towards the world we are the the um bearers of the world and we'll do what we want for it there are clocks all over the buildings as well again it's how best can we do things how quickly can we do things let's do let's do let's do let's do there's no time to think and therefore only time to destroy uh, we instinctively think that the smoke is coming out of these chimneys but the fact that there is there are arrows going down again tells us that it's actually sucking out the blue beautiful air straight into this machine which is replacing it with this toxic dirty pollution all in the name of progress civilized progress the um, flag motif is beautifully ingeniously um, positioned here where we have the light bulb probably symbolizing enlightenment uh, and enlightenment in the name of conquer might 
and conquering with might. Um, and this is so much you can read into this, so much. Oh, it's everywhere. Those are some of the few things that really come out. So the land is bare and brown and the wind blows empty across the plains. So you have this destroyed landscape, absolutely destroyed. And the irony is it's now truly a terra nullius landscape. Now it is a no man's landscape. There is nothing more you can take from this land that is going to keep you alive. It's just completely destroyed. And the pipes here are taking our eye to the infinity of what it has done to the land. You have here a dead, what looks like a dead numbat, um, which is what the fossils look like in the pictures, the fossils before. And you have a um, one of the invaders or settlers um, it's suggested that they're reaching out, trying to see how far they can actually connect because they've realized what they've done and they want to reconnect with uh, hope, which comes from the knowledge of the indigenous people. So you can just see how far that they need to go to reconcile, to make peace and to learn and re repopulate the land in the way that is only sustainable. Huge, oh sorry, huge desolate place here. Um, this page unfortunately hasn't uh, produced well digitally, so let me just come back to this. So the text here is meant to say, where is the rich dark earth, brown and moist? Where is the smell of rain dripping from the gum trees? Where are the lakes alive with long legged birds? A few things happening on this page. So firstly, you see it's completely black. Uh, save these meant to be birds here. Save a few birds, that motif of birds. Um, you have the uh, settlers and the numbats and the bats at the same level. And that means for the first time since the start of the book that they are seen as equals, where before this, the rabbits have always been much greater, much bigger in size, which demonstrates much greater power. So here they have been dwarfed to the similar uh, position and status, in status, which is a very important moment for these settlers because now they are seen as the same. They are just as human as the uh, indigenous people. This question that they're asking, these where questions, uh, also makes us question what the intention of the invasion was or colonization is. If it is the, like, who's asking this question? If it's the invaders saying, where is the rich dark earth, brown and moist, where is the small rain dripping from the gum trees? If it's them asking that, that means, well, in their plight to try and take over and civilize the world, the unknown world, then they're in their plight, are they actually, were they really trying to cultivate the riches of the earth and not use it in the way that they did? Surely they knew they must have been using it in the wrong way, but the intention was not to destroy everything. Perhaps they wanted to keep the richness and diversity of the land, but they had the wrong way of going around it. So there is that open question of what is the actual intention here? I don't know if that's completely true, but that's something to think about here. Uh, the rabbit is looking down at the earth, which is, you know, in that horrible question of what's happening. And then we have the marsupial looking up in a sort of uh, potentially hopeful view that now that everything is in the living plane. Um, yes. So they, they could be both asking this question. And for the final page, I'm going to zoom in. Who will save us from the rabbits? Now, uh, again, we have a completely black page, which is framed here with this sort of eerie blue nighttime. Let me just try to get the whole thing in. Nighttime uh, color scheme over them. And yeah, they are equal in size and they look like they both, they are equal in size, uh, which again propels that idea that they're both equal in status. They're looking down into this sort of pool, this sort of lake, which is reflecting up into the stars. There's something about a fortune 
uh, device here, like, you know, asking the gods who will save us from the rabbits. And what's beautiful about this picture is you don't know who's asking this question. We think it could be the indigenous people, but it could also be the rabbits themselves asking who's going to save us from ourselves. It's a very, very lovely point in the story, which is, you know, the settlers, uh, the invaders have to think, wait a minute, we can see how much we're, de we're destroying and uh, who's going to save us from that. So very lovely uh, last page. There's a lot written on this last page. If you just do some research, there's some links in the description there. But yeah, it's a nice, very quick, hopefully, uh, analysis of this book. So hope you enjoyed and tune in next time.